Hello to Floss Tube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I'm back again this weekend with my first ever Finish With Me video. I hope you all enjoy this video. I am gonna just say right off the bat, disclaimer, I am not a professional finisher. I'm just hoping that my attempts to finish my items myself will also um, maybe give you the confidence or maybe you can learn some tips and tricks from me but just to show you that we all can do this. Um, so let's get started. In my last video, I shared with everyone a finish that I had made on a drawstring pouch using a cross stitch finish piece from last year. Here it is. Now we're not finishing the drawstring pouch today, but using this as an example, this finish, this was my first ever drawstring pouch it's the first time I have ever placed a cross stitch piece in, um, quilted it in like this before. Um, this was a big boost to my finishing confidence. And what I mean by that is, like I said, I'm not a professional finisher. I'm learning as I go. And I was hoping that you might wanna learn with me. So in the month of February, I had challenged myself to finish two, two, other pieces that I fit, um, cross stitch pieces that I stitched last year. This weekend, we're gonna work, start with Cooper. This piece is by Kathy Barrett Designs. I stitched this, this with a stitch along, oh, and a stitch along with Jen of Jen's Stitching Niche. And so today, before filming this video, I pulled him out and I did a very crude <laughs> whip stitch. I started by pulling out my quilter's mat here, and a rotary cutter, and a three by 17 inch quilter's see-through ruler. And what I did is I cut away the excess fabric from Cooper. So here's that excess fabric. I left one and one half inch um, on the edges of Cooper, and then I folded it over by a quarter of an inch and whip stitched on the back. Now this is kind of crude, like I said, I know it's crudely done. Um, once again, it's one of this, the first time I've done this, but I'm happy with it because this specific design and the way I'm finishing, finishing it, it's okay if it's, it has imperfections and I'm okay with that too. I'll do better the second time, but this time I'm gonna do my best, but it's a learning process. So like I said, I started by cutting off the, the um, edges of Cooper and you can see two pieces are just too small to use, but I'm gonna keep these pieces. I've got two pieces off the top and bottom edge, and I don't know um, how many of you save pieces like this, but I do for when I'm doing smalls, just like it's the month of February. We've had hands-on design and different designers have um, generously posted freebie pieces. Um, for Valentine's Day, and a piece like this, this is a 40 count linen, will lend itself to those small designs. So I always, when I cut pieces off this size, as you can see, uh, one piece is three inches wide, the other is four, and they have some length to them. And once again, it's 40 count, so I know there's some small designs I can use them for. So I'm gonna put those to the side to um, store away in my stash. So what we also have is I have a frame from Hobby Lobby. It's an eight by 10 frame that I picked up some time ago. Um, Hobby Lobby, if you're here in the States and you have a Hobby Lobby nearby, they often have sales on their frames, maybe once a month. Um, and if you do happen to go in to look for frames and it is not during that sale, they also have a 40% coupon you can download on your phone, but I picked this up in one of those sales. And I've already removed um, the backing in the glass. I do not plan um, to use the glass in finishing Cooper. I also pulled out some stitchery tape. This is double-sided stitchery tape that I use when I'm framing things. Um, I picked this up on Amazon. I usually use it to back the frame pieces with um, shopping bag paper, the, the uh, brown paper bag type paper. I also have a box cutter. I have scissors, a pencil, the ribbon that I'm gonna use for Cooper. I also have a coordinating fabric, 
as well as some quilters batting. Now, um, the first thing we're gonna do, now that he is all whip stitched and he's ready, we're gonna put him to the side. And I did try to get a little prepared as far as I've already cut the pieces out of, of the fabric. I've cut pieces out of the quilters quilting bat, batting, and I've already cut my piece out for of the um, foam core board. We're gonna need this as well. And I think the sheets can also be picked up at Hobby Lobby or I would think any big box craft store. And it's just what it says. It's two thick pieces of paper which are sandwiching a piece of foam core. I use this when I'm framing. I use this um, on ornaments um, just for various things. And you can see here what I did originally when I got started after Cooper was stitched. I pulled the backing for the frame. I put it in here and I pencil marked around the edges of it. But you see, I didn't cut it out right up to the edge. So what I did is I actually marked and then cut a fourth of an inch in from that edge. So this is eight by 10, but this is gonna be seven and three fourths by nine and three fourths, meaning the foam core that I've already cut out. The reason for that being is I am going to sandwich the batting in between the fabric. So I'm gonna put a layer of the batting on here and then a layer of the fabric before I put Cooper on him. And um, the reason for me making it smaller is because I'm gonna be adding, adding extra on the edges of this foam core. So if I had put it flush to the edges, such as an eight by 10, it wouldn't sit and nest nicely in the frame once we got the batting and the fabric on it. So, I also take to, um, the time to go ahead and put the stitchery tape on the back side of the foam core board. So, I've not removed the um, a protective paper from the sticky yet, but that's it's there. So, to go back again, um, I've ironed my, my cloth as well, but I, when I'm cutting the foam core board, I do generally mark what size I'm cutting, but I cut it with my husband's box cutter. Um, I don't, some people I hear have used the rotary cutters. I only have the one because I'm not a quilter. Um, I don't wanna replace my, my rotary blade often. So I just pulled out my husband's box cutter. It works really easy, but take your time, as with any sharp object, take your time cutting with it. I just make small, gentle strokes with this as I'm cutting so as not to, because it will cut deeper than your rotary blade so that it's not cutting through your self-healing mat. So once again, this is what I did with the box cutter. I went ahead and cut that piece out. We're gonna lay that to the side. I also cut two um, 12 inch pieces of the ribbon that I may use. And I say may because I may use one and not the other, but I will at least use one. And I went ahead and cut and pressed my piece of fabric. And so that's something I didn't share with you. I have one of the wool quilters mats. Um, it's really good, in my opinion, for, and I've shared it before on my videos, for when you're ironing your cross-stitch pieces because the heat of the iron, this is wool, the wool retains some of that heat. It also retains moisture. So make sure you're either using it atop your ironing board to protect the surface beneath the wool mat when you're ironing because it will, will because it's retaining the heat. It also retains moisture because it's a natural fiber. So with that being said, I've, I've used this to iron my piece, my cloth, um, and my cross stitch piece. And with the other thing I cut out was the quilters batting. And what I did with this is I cut it a half, a half inch larger than the eight by 10 size of the frame. So this is actually nine by 11. And here's that piece there. I went ahead and cut that out. And any of you that's ever worked with this knows because it stretches and gives so easily. Um, it's okay not to have the edges perfectly square. That happens. Just do the best you can. Okay. Now you ready to get started? I've done a lot of talking. Let's get started. 
So I'm gonna start by pulling out my foam core board. I'm gonna put this to the side. As I said, I've already put the stitchery tape on it. What I did is measured out the length that I need. I just eyeballed it up against this before I cut it. And I actually cut two different strip sizes because my fabric piece is actually wider than the quilter's piece. So I'm gonna pull these edges off. Now, because it's double-sided tape, all you're gonna be doing is pulling off the protected and you see, you hear that? So you're pulling off the protective paper. And thanks everyone for your comments last week on the finish of that piece. Um, many of you feel the same way I do that finishing, um, it's not that I can't do it, is that I really am a visual learner. Um, I have to do it myself. I have to have my space and, and um, an open mind um, to be able to learn and to figure it out, meaning no distractions. <laughs> and so that's what I had last Saturday morning. It turned out perfectly. It took me a couple of hours, but it was well worth it. So I'm gonna, go, going back to finishing this piece, I've taken the quivers batting, I've taken that outside edge of this, those uh, stitchery tape off, and I'm gonna carefully Flip it over, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna flip it over. I'm gonna leave it just like that. And I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna focus on those edge, those corners first. If anyone's framed before, you know that I should have actually took a nip off of these corners. I'm a little too late for that now, but um, many of you may know, it'll work be fine with this piece, but many of you know when you're framing with your frame pieces, just cut a nip out of that corner because it because it's so sharp it tends to um, it could possibly poke through your fabric. So I've pushed in my corners, and I'm not going to even finger press those. I'm going to take the easy way I've learned out, which is just kind of roll. Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to kind of roll it and fold it over. And I just do that because it pushes it all at one time. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And it helps too. And you can also kind of, maybe not with the cotton, but if you're using your cross stitch fabric and you're sticking it to the stitchery tape, you can remove it, the stitch piece, and adjust it if needed. So I'm going to do that again. So see, it's not perfect by no means but it's stuck and it'll do. Okay, now I'm gonna remove this and this spare fabric, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this. So just kind of give you an idea of what it'll look like, and I can't believe it's already got wrinkles in it again. It's like a kind of imperfection in the fabric there. But I'm gonna put this on. And once again, pull off this stitchery tape paper, the protective paper. Oh, that one's not wanting to come off really well. Let's start with the next one. Sometimes it doesn't want to pull away. Just give it a another finger press with on the tape and then try to grab it again. Sometimes for some reason as you're putting it down or I, well, as I'm putting it down, I don't always focus on those corners so then when I go to pull off the protective tape, it doesn't want to work with me very well. Okay, there's that. And I'm gonna pull this over too. And who's gonna look at the back? I'm sure I can do it better. I'm not a framer, but I'm sure it can be done better. But at the same time, who is gonna look at the back? And don't look at anyone else's back. And I should have focused on those corners and I didn't. Let me see how that looks. Mm. 
Let me pull that loose. See there how that fabric's come loose from there pretty easy? That's a good thing. So I'm gonna try to fold that in a little better and then pull the rest of this over. In that center, I need to focus there a little bit. So on the next side, I think I'll focus on that. Oop. I can do something with that too. Flip it over. Pull that edge back up, try to focus on those corners a little bit. Now, when I'm doing a cross stitch piece, I don't use the stitchery tape. I actually pin my piece. I don't lace. I pin my pieces to the foam core board and adjust. I learned that from a video that was put up on YouTube or Floss 2 from Kitten Stitcher. Um, it's my understanding from what she's uh, shared with us that she used to frame herself and um, enjoyed it, but that's just a trick I learned from her. So, the corners don't have to be perfect because it's gonna be in the frame, but let's check and see how it's gonna fit. Look at that, that's pretty good. And see what I mean? See how much more snugly it's fitting now than it did before um, the piece of foam core board? So, the next thing I wanna do is decide on the placement. So what I'm gonna do, I know I want one piece of that ribbon on, so let's play with it. And I see I've got an imperfection in my fabric there, so let's put it in a place that possibly I can cover that up. So there's the ribbon I chose. I chose that because it kind of, Reminds me of wood. Not that wood's perfect like that, but so let's try it like this. What you think? It has a little bit of fine wire in the edges of this ribbon, which is a good thing. But because of that, it's not wanting to lay just right. But we're just doing this for placement purposes. And let's place Cooper in there and see. Actually, I like that. I like that. What do y'all think? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull out the pins and these are just regular straight pins. And I'm gonna use these to put in my ribbon. I'm gonna put this one in first. I know 100% I want this one. Now you do sometimes have to have a little umph <laughs> to put these pins in. Um, if you're gonna be framing a piece with cross stitch and you're gonna pin it on the edges of this foam core board, um, actually I start when I'm doing cross stitch and I leave them out like this so I can pull them out and adjust it if I need to. And we're gonna, we, I really need to do that here too. Okay, that looks kind of straight. And actually I'm pulling it kind of taut because I am, it's also pulling that quilter's batting and fabric a little bit. So because it's got the wire, I'm gonna finger press it a little. And place three pins in again. Okay, let's see how that looks. I'm gonna move it over just a smidge. It looks a smidge off. And that's a good thing to have this ruler out. So, yep, I'm just a smidge off. I think what I'm gonna do is because this is starting to pull up just a little bit, 
good old stitchery tape. I cut a small piece and I'm going to cut that piece in half. This thing's picking up everything but money, isn't it? Now let's hope I can get that back off. Little finger press those down. It may not want to come up off of that. There it goes. Help if I had some nails. All right, there we go. So, let's try that again. Measure that up. I've got it a smidge too much the other way. All right, and I'm going to finger press this to the back and rub my finger down the center because I know that stitchery tape's in there and replace those pins. But if you're going to frame something with these pins, like I said, you got to have a little oomph after like my, my uh, fingers are already getting a tiny bit sore, um, what I would suggest is just to put a thimble on. Um, probably one of those that are the, uh, the plastic ones that you just slip the tip of your finger into. Your pad that covers your pad of your finger. Now, since I know this is where I'm wanting to put it, I'm also gonna put more than just the three pins because I want it to stay secure. Okay, and this is where we need it to. So I'm just going to put a couple more pins here. Okay, and I can press on both sides down on this. Okay, and I'm going to get another small piece of this stitchery tape to secure those on the back. See here, I don't want them flipped up like that. So I've cut another small piece. Let's do the same thing we did on the front. And press it down really good. That way I can get those edges off. It also helps secure these um, corners. So win-win. Like I said, these corners are gonna be hidden in the corners of the frame. So it's not too much of a worry. <laughs> there you go. Come on there. All right. There's that one. And let's do this side. All right. There's the first side. And there's that imperfection in the fabric. Let me kind of get this, the placement right again. I think I had it laying over both sides. Oops, sorry. Didn't mean to scare anyone if I did. Drop that quilter's ruler. Okay. So yeah, I want him to overlap both of the ribbons. So that kind of secures him in the center of the frame, but also gives a, a focal element, something to draw your, your eyes. Um, breaks up that just stark, bright yellow background with that brown. And then that teal colored frame that's aged a little bit. I'm loving it, loving it. This is just what I had in mind of how I wanted it to turn out. The only thing I didn't consider when I wanted uh, decided I wanted to do this video um, is securing Cooper. I'm gonna have to take him back and just do some really small stitches just to um, um, secure him onto the piece. And that'll be easy to do because of the fabric and the batting. Um, I'm not gonna stitchery tape Cooper. <laughs> because who knows, down the line somewhere, um, I may wanna reframe him in a different way, in a different frame, or um, maybe one of my children wanna take him and give him a good home with them one day. And they can remove him from this easily and use it as something else. Now, like I said, I don't plan to um, put the glass back in here and the reason is I've got all these elements in here 
Um, I might take a look at it and see, but I really don't see any reason why to why I need to use the glass. Also, I had recently um, did a cross stitch or, or an ornament for Christmas this past year with my leftover orts, which are the just the snippings from your threads after you've stitched. Um, I placed them in a Christmas ornament and used some used some glass etching paste to etch 2020 on it. And I think it turned out so nicely, but that was my first time etching too, and I want to get better at that. So I was thinking if I use that left leftover glass from this frame, I can practice on that etching. I'm sorry. Please bear with me. There we go. He wanted to give us some troubles. Okay. Let me pick up that quilter as well. Oh. It is off a little bit. Much better. It's about an inch and a quarter from the bottom. And I did that one a little differently because I had that tape, so I placed him before I pinned him. So now I just need to pin him. So this coming weekend, um, which is Valentine's Day weekend here in the U.S., I hope to finish up another piece. Um, I don't know that I'll do a video. It really is going to depend on the response I get from this one. You can kind of hear my voice a little bit, my nervousness, because I've never did a tutorial video. And um, and this is the first time I've done this as well. So, like I said, I'm going to make mistakes and um, appreciate any tips and tricks anytime I've ever done some type of um, video like this um, as far as tutorials. I always get good feedback from all of uh, my philosophy friends out there that have maybe been more familiar with what I was doing or more familiar with certain aspects. And so I'm always thankful to hear that feedback. All right. And so now, once again, that is secured in place. Let me smooth that out a little bit. And then... I need to, whoop, those are secured pretty well with the, the tape that's still showing. So I'm gonna close up these pins because we know we don't wanna spill those. I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening picking them up. <laughs> so here we go. This is the way it's gonna look in the frame. And as you can see, I can't secure this in the frame because of the, the bra, the, I can attempt to secure it. Let's just attempt, how about that? Yeah, they'll fold over a little bit because this is what we're doing is flush to the frame. Um, I was concerned that they wouldn't fold over at all, but that'll help hold that in place. And then I'm going to go upstairs shortly into my craft room and I'm going to secure Cooper with a few little teeny tiny stitches on to this piece. What do y'all think? I really like it. I like it a lot. This mustard yellow is one of my favorite colors anyway, and so when I went to find things to finish him up with, um, I shared in the last video that I had found a piece of mustard yellow wool, and I love the color saturation, but I did not have enough to back this at all. It wouldn't, there wasn't even enough to fill the inside of the frame. So I was on the lookout for that color and I was so happy to find it. So I think it picks up the yellow and the, and the letters there really well. And then because it's such a bright color, I mean, just like this, it's beautiful, but at the same time, drab. <laughs> you lose, um, makes you lose interest. So I wanted to break up that color some, which is the reason I went looking for at first, I was looking for some type of lace or something of that sort to lay there, and I ran across this, and I grabbed it because I knew that's exactly what I wanted. So that was actually the Ribbon Boutique, um, just a, a wired ribbon. 
and I'm sure I'll find things to do with it again. It will go perfect with Christmas designs. This stitchery tape is something I use over and over when I'm doing framing. Um, when I'm making ornaments, this is a great product to me as a stitcher. Um, I try to keep that on hand. The other thing, like I said, I wouldn't hesitate to get one of these wool mats um, if you're a stitcher. They, with the Best Press, if you're not familiar with Eileen's Best Press, that was a recommendation from Vonna uh, a couple years ago. And I swear by it now, just like she does. But if just a sp um, spray or two of Best Press with your stitch piece here, it leaves it nice and crisp. Um, so instead of dra um, dragging out my large cur um, ironing board to stitch my stitch pieces, this is a really great product if you're just stitching a small, um, stitching, ironing a small piece. And uh, other than that, please let me know what you think. Leave some comments below. Um, are you interested in seeing me finish some other things as I go along? Because that's going to be one of my goals for this year is to finish some of my past whips. Um, like I said, I'm not, my disclaimer was I'm not a professional and I'm not, but I'm just hoping even through your going through the motions with me, you might pick up a tip or a trick or you might leave a comment and I pick up a tip or a trick, trick from you and we can learn together and we can all, um, earn a little, not earn, I guess you can say earn, <laughs> gather a little more confidence on finishing our pieces because let's face it, we all want them displayed. I hope everyone has a great coming week. Take care, much love. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.